All right. So, it's been about a month since I first began my journey with Stanley Parable. And I played, I, I think it was a, it was a very long stream. I want to say it was around three hours. And I feel like I got to a point in that where traditional Stanley Parable may end. And then suddenly Ultra Deluxe started. It was a wild ride. Um, I have these backed up on YouTube under Third Class Gaming if you haven't seen it. I think these only save on on Twitch for a bit. Um, but it was an experience. It was definitely a game um, in the same way that the Alice in the Wonderland is a story, you know, a book. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was very weird, very funny, very fun. Uh, and uh, if you go out there and, and, and look this game up and do your research, you'll, you'll realize it's, it's kind of hard to explain, even after playing it three hours, kind of hard to explain. It got to a point where the narrator was uh, kind of done with the Stanley, me trying to play Stanley Parable and introduced the idea of you know what, let's, what is this Ultra Deluxe thing? It's stupid. I don't like it. Let's do Stanley Parable 2. That's what people want. And it was, it was, it was getting late, and it was a little too heady for me. It was the whole thing was a little too heady. But especially at that time, a bit too heady. So what have I been doing for a month? Uh, if you're on my things, uh, I've been playing a lot of just of this wonderfully fun casual game called Theater Rhythm Final Bar Line. It's a rhythm game. It's a lot of fun. And that, that's what I've been doing because that's the effect that this had on me. I mean, there was also a timing thing where the game that I wanted to play came out and stuff like that. Uh but I'm doing this, uh, I'm streaming this, it's, it's, I feel slightly earlier than it should be for half of the people that watch this, and slightly later than it should be for the other half. So, whereas the last uh, video had uh, quite a bit of uh, interaction, this one, this one I'm, I'm happy to do solo. <sighs> Again, full disclosure, I accidentally clicked on Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe from my game menu uh, and it started up and it immediately started with not what time is it uh, but welcome to Stanley Parable 2 and I was like oh no things are happening and you don't why do you know this um, and then I closed out of it so that if and anything happens it might just restart the game and if it does you know I don't know I'll play it through it a little bit I guess uh, hopefully I didn't, I can, this game is so manipulative and remembers so much. It might just think that I abandoned it on that, on that thing. So we're going to start with the normal question here. What time is it? <laughs> I mean, yes. All right. Fair enough. Yes. Uh, lots of people. Oh, okay. Whoa. Okay. Well, I mean, true. Harsh, but true. It is 9.26. Aww. Aww. 
Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, we don't know each other, do we? Do we? Wow. That's so ominous and sad. What does that mean? Ominous and sad. Love it. Yes. Okay, cool. <laughs> So this is just, again, as a brief recap, this is the creator of the game. Uh, not really being tasked with, but, you know, whatever, deciding that he is going to make this. They were going to release this on PlayStation and, uh, and other consoles. And instead of just you know, re-releasing it, you know, porting it, he decided to make this little commentary on expectations in video games, which I think, you know, is kind of representative of at least part of the message of Stanley Parable. So if someone, if his, if the dev studio, which I believe he owns, were to task him with what would the Stanley Parable 2 be? This is absolutely how it would start, and people would go crazy for it. They would love it. I love this, and I don't even want this. <laughs> That's so cool. Okay, so when I said I accidentally started it last time, this is what was going on. I was like, oh, this is, I, no, I need to wait till I stream this. Beyond this, I don't know what's going to happen. This is all uncharted territory. So, let me take a look at settings. The whole thing, too, in the last video, when it started talking about what is, you know, a port, what is, what is it that people want, and everything was just absolutely this. The, the, the fonts the red on white and black scheme that we see so often not looking at you Resident Evil but I mean it's like it's appealing for a reason um so they actually changed the layout <laughs> of this to match that that's uh that's a heck of a thing to do alright This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. 
this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. All right, so here we go, new territory. Um, the only other thing I guess I should say, if uh, you didn't watch the previous stream, was uh, there was a part where it's like, if you were to have a new Stanley Parable experience, what kind of balloon would you want? And there were two choices. Uh, I chose one. It said, cool, we'll go with the other. So if you're wondering why there's balloons... I didn't choose these balloons, but here they are. I, I really... All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. <clears throat> Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. I chose no matter how room. hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. <clears throat> I chose whatever option wasn't happy 12th birthday, Stephanie's. But so far, other than the balloons, which are... To be fair, kind of terrifying. This is such a there is such Stanley a Stanley felt the bucket calling to him, begging him to pick it up. Why was he not doing it? The felt what calling to me? Oh my gosh, I didn't even Okay. Oh okay. Stanley picked up the bucket. Brilliant. Love it already. There's definitely like a horror element to this that I know I talked about in the previous stream, but there just there just gets to be points in this where you're just really uncomfortable. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. <sighs> I will. Because I'm scared now. Still no one was here. Stanley needed the bucket's warmth and comfort now <laughs> more than ever. Perhaps his boss's office was where he'd find answers. Yeah, maybe. I wonder if it's just the same thing, but... Not oh, yet. Stanley, can you feel it? The broom closet. It wants the bucket. <laughs> you can feel that, can't you? The aura of jealousy. It's as clear as day. This broom closet believes it deserves the bucket. <laughs> I can really feel it. Now. It's a bucket. It belongs in a broom closet. That's what the broom closet is trying to say here. It's supposed to go with the other cleaning supplies. Good for you, Stanley. Don't give in. Don't hand over the bucket. I know how hard it must be. Given the pressure that the broom closet is putting on your shoulders right now, but you have to be strong. This is your bucket. This is your companion and lifelong friend. You can't hand it over. Oh no. We're getting into name calling now, it seems. Is this how low the broom closet has sunk that it has to resort <laughs> to this stream of petty insults simply in order to get you to hand over the bucket? Stanley, I never liked this broom closet for a variety of reasons, but even this is worse than I had imagined. Wow. Now the broom closet has the gall to imply that you and the bucket are not truly deep and lasting friends, <laughs> that your relationship is purely superficial and convenient, that your life is so banal and meaningless that you'd feel the same um, sort of kinship uh, towards okay. any inanimate object which happened to lay in your path in an even partially enticing manner? Well, oh. I never. Go on, Stanley. Lay into it. Really tell the broom closet off for its demeaning comments. Expand uh, on the wide variety of experiences you and the Bucket have shared together. Go through each of them point by point. Share your journal entries detailing the rich emotional landscape of your <laughs> feelings for the Bucket as they have changed and evolved over the years. Let him have it. I... I can't believe that they recorded all new dialogue for okay, this. I've got you something which I think will help settle this debate once and for all. Here we go. There. <laughs> now it's settled. No more debate. No more discussion. 
<laughs> Take a hike, broom closet, with all your meandering philosophical diatribes about the nature of cleaning supplies and their relationship to broom closets in the natural order of things. I... All right, I've got a second sticker back here, and I'm going to slap it on as well because I think it's appropriate. You see? I feel that it works because the sticker is also a bucket. That way, if you're ever unsure whether the thing you're holding is a bucket or not, you can look down at this sticker and say to yourself, ah, it's a bucket. There really is a wide variety of applications for this sticker. I mean, there's, there are, there's one application for that sticker. You know what? I could take the name calling and the dismissal of your kinship with the bucket, but now the broom closet is just giving us a silent treatment. And to be honest, I'm sick of the pettiness on display. You can stay here all you like, but I've had it with this impetulant room of cleaning supplies. Easily the most childish such room I've ever been in. I'll see you outside, and we can get on with the story about you and your bucket. Okay. That sounds fair. I feel like he means it, though. So I'm gonna... I'm probably... probably <laughs> I spent so much time in the broom closet on the first playthrough. So, yeah, no, I got the bucket. I'm good. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. You know, I think on this playthrough, I'm really, I am just going to take his advice. I got my bucket. And that's pretty, pretty good, if you ask me. Who knows what adventures... This is different. This is different than the first playthrough. Got the feeling money's for stealing, but not yours, of course. Say that's a lovely purse. Okay. We found one of them. One of the miniature Stanley figurines. Remember, no reward for collecting all of these. Only the oh, that's right. pleasure of a job well done. You can't buy that sort of happiness, Stanley. God knows I've tried. So, I implore you to savor each and every moment you come across one of these beautiful figurines. So, so much of this. So, there was a bit at the end of my last playthrough in, in Ultra Deluxe where it introduced a bunch of concepts that were nonsense and sounded awful like here's a bucket maybe you need a bucket or sometimes you can collect things like figurines that was my second figure the first one was in the showcase of why i should play ultra deluxe or stanley parable 2 i guess is what they called it there so they're implementing all the cool changes that <laughs> sounded awful but also, they're changing just random things. Very, very... You know, there's a reason people say play Ultra Deluxe. And they're correct. I'm gonna meet... There's four more figurines. That's my new thing. I'm play. I'm sorry, sometimes I like to play video games. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed by the weight of this revelation, Stanley may have broken down into an emotional dumpster fire if not for the soothing presence of the bucket. Even now, in his darkest of hours, did the bucket's warmth and guiding light pierce the dark clouds of confusion and chaos. It would be with him always. Aww. The bucket would. And he knew it. The two of them were inseparable. At this point, Stanley was so absorbed in the tender spiritual connection he shared with the bucket that he didn't notice the keypad behind the boss's desk. 
nor in his bliss of simply being near the bucket did he have any notion that the pin number for the keypad was 2845. This is actually kind of hard to do on a console. But Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes, this is certainly the most logical explanation. You know, I said it in my last stream, but I think a lot of this really is... Okay, I can't go in there. Uh, you know, metaphor for relationships and dependence. And now I feel that way even more, that it's hammering the bucket thing home. <gasps> Yay! Another miniature Stanley figurine. This, um, you know, there really must be a snappier name for these things. What about mini stands? Stanley figs? Or what about Stanlerines? Yes, I think I like that. Another Stanlerine under your belt. That's not right. That's not good. No. Not. Okay. It's <laughs> <laughs> so out in the open. I always try pressing up and it never works. Okay. Arr. The elevator raced downward, plummeting towards an unknown fate. It would be all Stanley could do to keep himself together, if not for the bucket. <laughs> Soothing him, comforting him, reassuring that in this darkest moment of uncertainty, he would be all right. The bucket is here for you, Stanley. Everything will be fine. This is such a weird way to go with this. Again, the my immediate spicy hot take is that this is still an expansion on the idea from the first game about codependency. That all being said, it's still it's still pretty weird. Stanley and the bucket walk straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Yeah, I don't know about that. I know I'm following directions, but I'm, cu I'm curious. Wait, Stanley said to the bucket. Can we go back <laughs> up? When I was pressing those keypad buttons, there was something very intriguing about the number three. I want to go back so I can try pressing the number three again. The bucket said nothing. The bucket said nothing. This is just, this is really... How many, it was it like 10 years in between? This game in Ultra Deluxe? The original in Ultra Deluxe? Here we are, said Stanley. Now I'm going to try out that number three button. He took the bucket over to the keypad and began absolutely slamming on the number three over and over and over. Well, he said, the number three is such a special button, I'm having the time of my life. <laughs> Stanley looked expectantly at the bucket, but the bucket remained silent. This was a shock to Stanley, who had always felt such a connection with the bucket. How was this not as exciting to the bucket as it was to him? Once Stanley had had enough of the number three, he got back in the elevator. You know what? The bucket might be a stand-in for the narrator in this. That's my new theory. It's a detachment thing. Perhaps the bucket had missed something. Perhaps it had not seen how much joy Stanley got from slamming the number three repeatedly. It's just like, how can you not? 
How can you how can you play this at this point and not not relate to being in in, in a relationship like this? Sometimes with a bucket, sure. But also sometimes not with a bucket. A hint of regret nagged in the back of Stanley's mind. Should he demonstrate the number three for the bucket again? Oh. I mean, that is what I would do in real life. Which is sad, and now you guys know too much about me. It's like, hey, maybe... No, 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 said Stanley to the bucket. You can't go on yet. Not till you understand how much the number three means to me. You and I have been through so much together, and I just want you to see what I see. Feel the happiness I feel. He smiled at the bucket, and the bucket said nothing. <sighs> now you'll like this song. Maybe you just maybe you just weren't listening the first time. Here, here, listen to the song again. It's... Here we go, said Stanley. This time, I'll really show you. He ran to the number three and began to wail on it like a musician on a beloved instrument, weaving a concerto of truth and passion. He wielded the number three like a fine artist would wield a paintbrush. He told stories okay. through the number three, stories of his dreams and hopes and fears. And the whole time, he looked to his bucket for a reaction of some kind. Anything to let him know that the bucket appreciated what he was doing. The bucket conveyed absolutely nothing at all. Only silence. Crushed by a wave of dejection, Stanley returned to the elevator. Stanley Parable 2 is making me sad. Stanley and the bucket were so close, they'd always been there for one another. Why suddenly could the bucket not connect with this passion of Stanley's? The question caused Stanley to ruminate the whole way down the elevator. He knew that there must be a way to get through to the bucket, to communicate fully with his dear friend. Surely there was a solution, mustn't there be? I mean, the, put a sticker on it that says Property of Stanley. Oh. It's just so sad. I'm going to try going back up the elevator one more time. Even though it had already saved and started a new sequence. said Stanley. I know what to do. I know how to fully express this feeling in my heart. He decided right then and there that he would hold a press conference where he would speak to the public on all matters relating to pressing the number three. I literally have over. done that in real life. He would elaborate fully on what the number three meant to him and why he felt so alive when pressing it. Then the bucket would be able to see his joy through the eyes of others. It would get to see the world react to this discovery of Stanley's. And it would be through the public eye that the bucket would finally understand Stanley's work. <sighs> I am ready. For months, he advertised and marketed his press conference, building excitement around it, developing and rehearsing it, until it couldn't be refined a single measure further. When the big day arrived, Stanley was as prepared as he'd ever been for anything in his life. That, well, I mean, that's true. I... <laughs> I absolutely would say both Stanley and I have been as prepared for this as everything. Oh, boy. What's for such a machine? 
Oh man, this is a lot. This was it. One last chance to win the bucket over. That's One crazy. opportunity to share a true connection with a loved one. Come on, bucket, remember? Oh, there's a way, I forget. You can... How do you do it? It's not the thing. That's duck. I can duck now. That's kind of cool. That's not what I'm trying to do, but... All right, anyway. Congratulations, Sam. You remember where you came from. <laughs> Co-workers. There was a way to zoom. And I found out, like, way too late at the end of the... Th I guess now, instead of zooming, I can duck. So, cool. Anyway. Maybe that'll come... I, you know what? I got bigger fish to, fish to fry. The dude who came up with these... There was no one here. Nobody had come to the press conference to hear Stanley speak, to listen to him talk about what it really means to press the number three on a keypad over and over. He was unloved, uninteresting, he was a failure, and in that moment Stanley knew that the bucket would never again take him seriously. There would be no connection, no deeper understanding. The bucket merely sat there in his arms, indifferent. And so it began that slowly, over many years, the two of them grew more and more distant. They spoke less and less, neither wishing to state the obvious that any sense of real respect between them had eroded since that day at the press conference. There would be no more games, no more long conversations about passion and pursuit. Only a silence that consumed the space between friends. And Stanley, having for once in his life discovered the warmth and comfort of true companionship, was cast back into the unremarkable normalcy of loneliness. Ha. <sighs> you know... Sometimes I'm just not ready for for things like this. <laughs> hey, that's a picture of where I came from. All right. Balloons are still here. That's pretty good. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. And that was so intense. I don't... <sighs> I don't know if I want the bucket anymore. No, I don't. It was too intense for me. Oh, no broom closet if you don't. Okay. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. What the actual... Chief Chris's remains from warehouse floor. Brilliant. Like it. Totally good. Somewhere with red and blue. Well, that's, you know. So 
upsetting. Oh, this is so actually upsetting. out of this because I want this as my desktop wallpaper. You guys don't need to ask why. But we know what we forgot, what we don't yet know yet in bonus stuff. Gosh. Big Lays. Play 416. That's not me. I'm employee 427. So Stanley Parable, that was wild. This is, I don't know if it's the state of mind I'm in or the fact that it's so unsettling, but I'm, I'm so much more unsettled by, by part two here. The ultra deluxe part. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. If it's the same dialogue, I'll leave. There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow, just an empty broom closet. No okay. reason to still be here. Yeah, it's okay. We're good. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. nothing Ugh, oh my gosh I have missed this music not gonna lie uh, but I haven't missed how violently the controller shakes when I do this Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 28 four five but of course Stanley couldn't possibly have known this <laughs> yet incredibly by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck amazing he stepped into the newly opened passageway
I have an idea though, like if I went right and did that whole thing, there would have been a red door. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Yeah, why not? I think I did that the first time. Lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? I mean, you never do. Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. Onwards and upwards. Box. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No, he refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never. It was unthinkable, wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content, walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life, for he would dismantle the controls once and for all. Oh yeah, I'm going to. I'm done with you guys. Blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? He had won. He had defeated the machine, unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. <laughs> for it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. Wow. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Oh, 
I think I do back this way. I wish I had one of them flashlights like in the other video games. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. <laughs> I got a trophy for beating the game. <laughs> you literally just do exactly what it tells you. Which I've never done. You beat the game. And that's it. Power of narrative. <sighs> we're not quite done yet, are we? All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. I mean, that seems like kind of a... Oh, yeah, that was the whole thing. <sighs> Can I take you with me? Stanley lifted the bucket into his arms, okay. and a wave of comfort rushed over him. Why not, right? Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Not this time. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, <laughs> telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Was this better than the meeting room? Yes, Stanley thought to himself. Yes, perhaps it truly was. How insightful the bucket turned out to be. It's just validation. Like, right at this point with the bucket, it's just validation. And then we saw how dark things got the last time I had the bucket. Truly, it got... being here with the bucket was a grand adventure. Stanley reflected on all they'd been through together. First, walking through the door on the right. Then <laughs> walking to the lounge. Then arriving at the lounge. What a thrilling journey the bucket had inspired. I mean, it's just, it's weird because the narrator's, like, not being mean about it. Perhaps this was where the bucket felt most truly at home. Here in the employee lounge. Perhaps it's the only place a bucket can even feel at home. <sighs> it's, it's just, it's so dark. Everything with this bucket is so much more dark than Stanley decided to. to just give the bucket absolutely as much time as it needed to be in the lounge. And it's Clearly, so the bucket and the employee lounge shared a special connection. That's so the opposite of the first experience, which the narrator is it's between you and the narrator, and he's just constantly berating you. Now it's encouraging this unhealthy relationship. I, it's. Uh, yeah, that, there's not going to be any more dialogue like they used to. But finally, the bucket was done being in the lounge, and they took the first open door on their left to get back to business. Let's see what happens with this. Because every, th every bad decision I make now, he reinforces with the institution of the bucket. No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. The cargo lift, yes. Go there. Go to the cargo lift. Good, said the bucket. Now ride the lift all the way to the top. There's something up there I need you to do. Stanley did not question why or how this bucket was speaking to him. It should have alarmed him, of course, because buckets can't talk. But Stanley chose not to think about this obvious fact. He was firmly convinced that the bucket had spoken to him, and he unthinkingly did whatever the bucket asked. 
All right. So you know, so the folks from chat that were given uh... in here said the bucket. Go into this dark room over here. Stanley once again obeyed blindly. There are all the folks that had you know commentary against how this is analogous for being in a toxic relationship and a commentary there. Um. I mean, this is, though, right? You gotta admit that. What dark room does he want me to go into? This one I can't go into. It's the other one. Was this the one with the, the phone? Yeah. Now pick up the phone, said the bucket. Pick up the phone, and it will take us back home, where we can go about life together. Can I actually pick up the phone? The, the first time I didn't even try. Oh. This is the sad story of a man named Stanley and his bucket. Once upon a time, I gave Stanley a bucket because I thought he was lonely and could use a friend. And then, very distressingly, he began to believe the bucket could speak to him. Oh, okay. I'm still in control. Oh, I so want that poster. It says jazz music. <laughs> oh, I really do, though. I wish I could tell what that mug said. Sorry. There's, there's more going on here than just mugs. I assume. Oh, the bucket's here. Okay. Um. Yikes. Uh. I don't like this. The Stanley Parable Reassurance Bucket was merely meant to provide the comforting glow of companionship. It doesn't literally talk and give you orders. Whatever Stanley is hearing the bucket say to him is just in his head. Oh, oh dear. Oh dear. Oh. oh dear. We can leave and go home at any time. That's cool. I'm just gonna do that, I, I guess. Lately, I've been concerned about him. Wouldn't you be concerned as well? To see him delusional like this, obsessing over an inanimate metal object? I want to say something to him, but I don't know how I can convince him. I don't know if he'll listen to me. I mean, I never have before because you're awful and evil, but... This is a nice place. I wish I had a... I wish I had a flat this nice. I'll try anyway. Stanley, can you hear me? Listen to me. It's just a bucket. It can't think. It can't talk. All it will ever truly do for you is effectively transfer a liquid from one location to a different location. That's it. It doesn't do anything else. You see, 
he's not listening. He's still taking orders from the bucket. You know, once upon a time, it was me he took orders from. Me he trusted and listened to. Now all he cares about is his awful bucket. His stupid hunk of metal. Sad. I suppose he doesn't need me anymore. From now on, he's just going to cling to this bucket, this cold, empty bucket, this sort of shiny bucket. Hmm. Well, I'll give it this. The bucket does have a nice shine to it. Yes, I suppose on closer inspection that it doesn't quite look like your average hardware store bucket. It's just a little more, um, what am I trying to say? Sturdier, more capable of transporting liquid. Like it would be better at moving an amount of water from one room to another. Where's my bucket? Okay. Relive this same day with me over and over. Oh my god, what am I saying? Better at carrying water from room to room. It's a bucket. It's literally just a bucket. Why do I feel some need to point out the ways in which it's so much more than just a regular bucket? going on why do I want to be with the bucket hear what the bucket has to say do anything it asks what's wrong with me I don't understand perhaps perhaps if I had the bucket this would be less confusing yes the bucket could tell me what to do in this troublesome situation Give me the bucket. Give it to me. Give me the bucket, Stanley. I need it. Give it to me now. Give it or I'll... That was the most intense thing in this entire in this entire game. Like I remember, like when the uh, the whole office was going to explode and the narrator was cackling at you madly, and that was really intense. But that was fun. That was. That was. <laughs> All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Not 
this time. That's still too fresh in my memory. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Wow, yes, this room. What a beautiful room. What a gorgeous, gorgeous room. Thank goodness Stanley had taken this detour on his way to the meeting room. Life without having experienced this room was now too horrible even to consider. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. I wonder what happens. You know what I haven't done? I wonder what happens if Stanley you was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't five years ago. The phone thing without the bucket. I feel look so I think that's part of the original Stanley parable. And I did not do that in my first playthrough, so I'm gonna give that a shot. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for her. This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. She's been waiting. Yeah, I agree. I agree, Doc. Uh, duh. <laughs> I don't know. So, yeah, on the first playthrough, you get this this weird opportunity to uh, to do this. And it's like, oh, her. It's going well, thank you for asking. Um, actually, no. It's, it. you know, this game is really messing with my mind. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, on the first playthrough, you can, you can answer a phone or apparently you can unplug it like I did. So I don't know what happens if you actually answer it. I go and find out what that all's about. Find out what that's about. It's 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 so crazy. So uh, I don't know if you watch. Uh, I, this is this is part two. I, I did a, an initial stream, which I think encompassed most of just the original Stanley Parable. This is obviously Ultra Deluxe, and I stopped it right when it started to introduce Stanley Parable two. Um. And I just went through this entire sequence with a bucket uh, that really shook me to my core on a very emotional level. <laughs> I was not prepared for it. <laughs> so, so now I am kind of doing like the the, uh, the ultra deluxe Stanley Parable Two thing, um, except for this part. I think is still the original one. So That's on the initial so playthrough, you need I to just unplug the phone this, to reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. So I'm going to see what happens. Yeah, so I haven't gotten this playthrough yet. Before I do anyth anything more with the bucket, I'm going to see. Oh, Stanley, is that you? Uh, hold on, sweetie. Sorry to keep you waiting. I'm just pulling the bread out of the oven. All right. Okay, there we go. All right, now, I want you to come in and tell me all about your day. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha! Oh, come on. Did you actually think you had a loving wife who'd want to commit their life to you? <laughs> I'm trying to make a point here, Stanley. I'm trying to get you to see something. Come inside. Let me show you what's really going on here. Oh. This is... I don't know if this is more or less depressing than with the bucket. This is a very sad story about the death of a man named Stanley. Seriously. Stanley is quite a boring fellow. He has a job that demands nothing of him, and every button that he pushes is a reminder of the inconsequential nature of his existence.
Look at him there, pushing buttons, doing exactly what he's told to do. <sighs> now he's pushing a button. Now he's eating lunch. Now he's going home. Now he's coming back to work. One might even feel sorry for him, except that he's chosen this life. It's great because it doesn't give you an option to press anything else. So yeah, you just have to do it. But in his mind, ah, in his mind, he can go on fantastic adventures. From behind his desk, Stanley dreamed of wild expeditions into the unknown, fantastic discoveries of new lands. It was wonderful. And each day that he returned to work was a reminder that none of it would ever happen to him. And so he began to fantasize about his own job. First, he imagined that one day while at work, he stepped up from his desk to realize that all of his co-workers, his boss, everyone in the building had suddenly vanished off the face of the earth. The thought excited him terribly. Yeah, spent some time with the boys. So he went further. He imagined that he came to two open doors and that he could go through either. Oh, At last, man. choice. It barely even mattered what lay behind each door. The mere thought that his decisions would mean something was almost too wonderful <laughs> to be A little close to home. <laughs> As he wandered through this fantasy world, he began to fill it with many possible paths and destinations. Down one path lay an enormous round room with monitors and mind controls. And down another was a yellow line that weaved in many directions. And down another was a game with a baby. And he called it the Stanley Parable. <sighs> it was such a wonderful fantasy. And so in his head, he relived it again. And then again, and again, over and yes. over, wishing uh, beyond hope that it would never end, that he might I always yeah, feel um, this free. Surely there's an answer down some new path, mustn't there be? Perhaps if he stayed <laughs> just one more time. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, narrator is amazing. I um, So I want to say on my first playthrough, on my first stream with this game, it was like three hours, and uh, yes, uh, when you're suddenly in Firewatch, and they really do a great job of it until you realize, like, it's Firewatch, and they're like, ah, um, and they get thrown into Rocket League. Absolutely hilarious. Um, and I stayed in that for, for quite a while until eventually you get that sort of ending, I guess. Um, just, it, it, you know, I was starting I was saying, at the, <laughs> I was saying at the start of this, you're like, I, I really... It's very hard for me to explain my experience on that first playthrough because everything was just so hilarious and innovative and wild. Um, but also, like, it kind of devolves into this conversation about, okay, so what is this game about? Is it about the nature of narrative? Oh, no, an open world game. Quick, close it off, close it off. Yeah, and you get put in a Rocket League without a car. <laughs> um, and so, like, yeah, so what's it, you know, really about? And I, I, I kind of went on this tangent about being in, 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 in a way, being in a toxic relationship where the narrator is like a partner in a relationship and this whole thing being very toxic and being told what to do and making your own choices. And uh, chat had some disagreement on that at the time. And now in Ultra Deluxe here, in the second part of this, once they introduce Stanley Parable 2... You're given this bucket as a companion, and it's so much darker that uh, I'm just uh, doing this thing now. It's a lot of fun. But no, the uh, the Firewatch uh, Rocket League bit, literally one of the funniest things I've ever seen in any video game. And it's like, it's it's one guy, and like a, it's like, a, well, no, it's a team of guys. It's like one creator, one, like, how much, did they, they had to pay money to get rights to do that, right? <laughs> like, no, I've not seen the cassette tape yet. I haven't. No, this is a. Uh, oh, now I'm. I don't know if I. Well, I'm intrigued, but I don't know if I'm more scared than I feel like I should be. All right, I'm gonna. I'm gonna tell my wife I love her. Oh my god. See, this is uh, ultimately so much of this is just so depressing. But there is no answer. 
How could there possibly be? In reality, all he's doing is pushing the same buttons he always has. Nothing has changed. The longer he spends here, the more invested he gets, the more he forgets which life is the real one. <sighs> and I, this, this ending just seems like a commentary on the nature of playing video games. <laughs> and I'm trying to tell him this. That in this world, he can never be anything but an observer. That as long as he remains here, he's slowly killing himself. But he won't listen to me. He won't stop. Here, watch this. Stanley, the next time the screen asks you to push a button, do not do it. See, but it won't let me continue in the... Uh, yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah, this... It, this Thank you. Could not say it better myself uh, uh, about how it takes over your life. And it's like it. It's. Not, I don't feel like <laughs> a little bit of personal. Fun. I don't feel like it's that late where I am right now. But the the last options it gave me were to go to sleep and to be at work in the morning. You know, like <laughs> it's just it's so depressing. I feel like the first playthrough, especially with the Firewatch and. Um, Everything I had crafted there, I felt like it was a like it was making fun of you, but it was a lot more lighthearted. This is this this seems just like it's digging into my soul. Hey, Edu, what's going on? Um, yeah, we're just talking about <laughs> um how this game can be so lighthearted and sarcastic and like you know poking fun at you funny uh to like really digging into you uh and twisting your heart and it's like oh is this funny still i don't know if this is funny anymore uh i'm not really laughing anymore i'm kind of just sad <laughs> but you know uh maybe that's all right uh, again, this is, I feel like this is uh, still from the original Stanley Parable release and not the ultra deluxe version, this this little ending that I'm going through right now. Um, to uh, talk about Davey uh, Raiden for a second, because you brought it up, um, I imagine it was, it was absolutely the most fun and cathartic and sad thing to write of all time. I bet you he <laughs> went to bed every night thinking, well, the, I think this is brilliant, and this is kind of about me and my own personal experience. My own personal experience. Uh, hopefully other people get it. They they, they do. They, you're right. Yeah, the insults are, are incredibly personal. Um you know, and so I know he's made another game since, and I haven't played it. And the reviews on that one were that, like, you know, this one might be a little too on the nose for what's going on in his life and having to deal with the success from the Stanley Parable. Fair enough, but this is absolutely his commentary on everything he ever believes about life. So if it's not personal, then it doesn't work. Um, you see, can he just not hear me? How can I tell him in a way that he'll understand that every yes, second the beginner's he guide, yeah. here, he's Thank electing you. to yep. kill himself? How can I get him to see what I see? How can I make him look at himself? It's <laughs> fun to question nothing. This is almost like a therapy session. It's kind of like uh, David had a therapy session once, and he just took notes. He took notes during the session, and he's like, right, right. I should put this in a video game. I suppose I can't, not in the way I want him to. But I don't make the rules. I simply play to my intended purpose, the same as Stanley. We're not so different, I suppose. I'll try once more to convey all this to him. I'm compelled to. I must. Perhaps, well, maybe this time he'll see. Maybe this time. And I tried again, and Stanley pushed a button. And I tried again, and Stanley pushed a button. And I try <laughs> Jesus. Ah, uh, hell. Um. Well, I'll. I, I have a thought on that. Um. All right. So this is as good as time as any. I, I love it when. 
Yeah, a little bit dark. I like again first playthrough. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. This is killing me. This is actually about a normal stream length for me. I, I'm absolutely going to keep playing. Um, so first and foremost, um, yes, the beginner's guide. I have not played it. The reviews I read were genuinely favorable. Uh, I really do want to play it because I feel like I know this guy now. <laughs> um, second is to question nothing to question. Um, grammatically, no, is my opinion on that. It's like, uh, it's like saying believe nothing. So you're not believing anything. It's different than this is this. Well, look, <laughs> Loop. You know, I, I'm not. I, 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 I'm sorry that this is eating your your eating experience. <laughs> um, to uh, to believe in something, or or to have a lack of belief in something, to believe in nothing, is different than believing nothing. Is my quick hot spicy take on that um i love the question regardless and now i'm just really excited for the blue room but also i do want to point out yes this is a weirdly dark transition because i was doing stanley parable quote unquote two ultra deluxe in which the bucket really messed me up and really got me in a dark place and i was like wow i remember when things were fun and firewatch and rocket league um and now and now there's a blue room I'm not, All I'm, of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Oh, Stanley God. decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. I don't know. I don't know if I want to pick up this bucket. I really... The bucket... Well, it's probably... It might be the lighting. The confusion and the chaos all seemed to melt away <laughs> as Stanley embraced the bucket. <laughs> they recorded so much additional dialogue for this, for this release... It's kind of mind blowing. Any other any other studio. Well, it's it, it means something to me because it's different. <laughs> oh. Well, next time I'm in an office, I know exactly what I'm writing for the record. It's mostly going to be Stanley, Stanley Parable references. Stanley pressed the bucket upon every little thing in the office. <laughs> Nothing responded to the bucket's touch, but it did little to discourage Stanley's belief in the magic of the bucket. I already know the magic of the bucket, and it's oh, okay. Here we go. Wait, enable dog. Is there? Is that a thing? Is that really a thing? Okay, hold on. I would love to think that. Oh, so I'm. I if I. If, all right, dog mode enabled. Um, I was I was mentioning earlier that this the controls are a little hard. Um, I'm playing this on PlayStation, so like getting your pointer exactly right is just because I suck at video games. I <laughs> if I were playing this on a PC, dog mode easily enabled. Does dog mode do a thing before I go forward? <laughs> oh, I don't know if I like dog mode. Oh, I get a trophy for it, though. Thank you. Oh. And I am... I'm... I must... I, I can't deal with that. <laughs> That's... <laughs> All right, here we go. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. All right, so I genuinely, as always with these doors. Okay, hold on, real quick. Okay, so Davy actually initially imagined the bucket. So nothing has to change dialogue. So. You know, because I, you, it's it's so wonderful that, it, that you bring that up. That yeah, okay. So uh, for anyone else watching, um, 
yeah, I'm not going <laughs> to. Thank you, Loop. Yeah, I'm not going <laughs> to keep the dog mode going. Um, yeah, no, I, you know, there's enough in my life right now that I, I have trains going by every few seconds. I, I don't need a, a, a dog yapping all the time. Um, but yes, going back to uh, your point here about, yeah, uh, what you can do with Ultra Deluxe 10 years later on, like, again, you don't have to do anything. You could just port it to consoles and people would pick it up based on the reviews alone. The fact that he went back and he's like, oh, I'll write this whole thing about a bucket, and then thought, no, I'm going to do a whole bunch of stuff with this crazy bucket. I'm glad he hasn't changed at all. Uh, I hope he's doing well mentally. Um, I mean, he can't be doing worse. <laughs> so... <laughs> I don't know. Um, left or just right? stood there doing nothing oh. at all. Okay. He seems to think I have nothing better to do with my oh, time eh? than to sit around and describe every fascinating little detail of his inability to I never do said anything. Okay. This is why Stanley and I are on such good terms. I never got that dialogue before. Okay. Uh, what did I do last time? I went right and I did the whole... You know what? I don't think I did everything on the left. Uh, so I went last time. I went right, and I did the the last time I had the bucket. Rather, I went right, and I did the phone call home thing, and it was this horribly dark experience. <laughs> I don't think I went left. So, uh, but you know what? I went right, but I didn't go through this the was thing not on the, the left. Right way to the meeting room, but Stanley at had the felt first the door on the left. To him telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. Because you're right, it would be just so... And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct, was this better than the meeting room? Yes, Stanley thought to himself. Really? Yes, perhaps it truly was. How insightful the bucket turned out to be. Most lines without the bucket are from the original Half-Life mod from, like, 2011. I, um... Truly, I being here have... with the bucket was a grand adventure. <laughs> Stanley reflected on all they'd been through together. First, walking through the door yeah, this on the dialogue right, goes on then for a walking second. to the lounge, then arriving at the lounge. I want to look that up, because that sounds right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry, headphone thing. Okay, well, so... Never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left. Oh, wow. I didn't get that answer the first time. The first time I waited it out until dialogue had run out, and then I'm like, all right, now it's time to move on with the bucket. I didn't get like, oh, the bucket was wrong. Mind, mind bending does not begin to cover it. Uh... And so the two of them detoured through the maintenance section and walked straight ahead to the opposite door. Yeah, so I... No, I'm not going to do that. I'm gonna, I haven't not done this before, so... Well, well, at least with the bucket. I have not... Which, by the way, the, the amount of times I said, I haven't done this with the bucket before... Oh, good, Stanley. I'm glad you <laughs> found your way here. I knew you'd find this place eventually. Oh, my God. This is... Well... <laughs> You see, your friends and I are concerned for you, Stanley. We've come together here because we care about you very much. It's this bucket you're carrying around everywhere. The bucket isn't even from the original Stanley Parable. It's just sequel content. We're the ones that matter, Stanley. Classic characters from the first game, like the Adventure Line and the Broom Closet. Because that's what fans want from a sequel. They want more of their favorite jokes, not this bucket that they've never seen before. Yes, I know I'm the one who gave you the bucket, but you're spending too much time with it. He's so Don't jealous of the... Don't you want another story involving the adventure line? We could make the adventure <laughs> line go somewhere new. Yes, yes, that's what the fans want. Let's do it. Oh, where do you even start with this? I don't... I already have a new character. I have the bucket as a new character. 
But this is, you know what? Much like in the in the one um, bucket ending, the the phone call bucket ending, um, the narrator gets weirdly jealous of the bucket at the end. And uh, uh, again, the the stream's gone VOD, whatever you go back and watch, it doesn't matter. Uh, but I was talking about like that this being like a very very transparent thing. The character to go with the the character there's look duck it's not that i don't trust you on this one it's just a lot i've been through a lot tonight with the stanley parable and i don't know how much more i can handle oh uh, let's find out let's find out together all right Whee! look at that wacky line who knows where it'll go off to next oh and it played some silly music as well oh that's sorry to did <laughs> I, this is so loud. But I will say the same thing I said last time. <laughs> I love that the word line is trademarked. Now this is what the Stanley Parable is all about. <laughs> Don't you remember all those great jokes from the original dialogue? Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. <laughs> yes. It's as classic now as it was back then. <laughs> Let's do it for the fans, Stanley. Let's give them more content exactly like this. But if we want to do that, you're going to have to give something up. I have to give something. Also, yeah, this is just, yeah, non pattern wall. Like, oh, man. Okay. All right, so I have to give something up. I don't like that. It better not be the bucket. We've been the bucket and I by this point have been through a lot together, a lot of trauma. <laughs> you know, every once in a while, and I, I said this earlier, a lot of the, a lot, every once in a while, it's just survival horror vibes. Don't you get it, Stanley? We need to get rid of the bucket. That's why I'm very proud to introduce a brand new character. This is the Bucket Destroyer. Oh. I think it'll make no. a wonderful new addition to the rich lore of the Stanley Parable. True, it also was not in the original game, but it's such a well-fleshed-out character with so much personality that to me, it already feels as though it's been part of the cast all along. Don't you agree? Can you guess what the Bucket Destroyer does? Surely you don't need me to spell it out for you. <laughs> I can guess. <laughs> Go ahead now, Stanley. Say goodbye to the Bucket, and then pop it into the machine when you're ready. Okay, so... Um, so, again, and, and thank you, uh, Luke, for, for chiming, chiming in here, because... Mind-bending is not the right word. I think this game is actively... Well, I mean, it's trying to get you to think. Obviously, I love that about games. Never gonna argue that. I do think it's actively trying to traumatize you. <laughs> you know what's crazy is that it it did not bleep out uh, that. I thought it bleeped out a uh, ducks thing. I have kind of an auto mod thing going on right now, so sorry if anybody gets they can't see chat for a second. I have nothing against swearing at all in my chat feel absolutely free to auto mod might catch you and i and i'm really fucking sorry about that now listen to me it's crucial that you give it the bucket oh i, I don't really don't want to do this i will do if it can't destroy your bucket destroying buckets is all it knows that is its singular personality trait I can hear you saying, how does a character with only one personality oh my God. trait deserve to join the pantheon of beloved Stanley Parable characters? Well, you see, if you were to really explore the Bucket Destroyer, you'd see that its desire to crush buckets is so densely loaded with complexity and nuance that it's really like ten personality traits. What other oh, I can't go back. Game can you even say that about? The broom closet? Oh, I probably could have gone down there. I wonder what sort of Bucket Destroyer merchandise the fans will be clamoring for after this. Okay, the bucket destroyer is getting very upset now. You'll have to yeah. hurry and feed it. We can't get back to the classic Stanley Parable characters like the adventure line okay. or the bucket destroyer until I... you crush that damn bucket. Oh Quickly my now. God. The fans are waiting. Do it, the fans, Stanley. Give the fans what they want. Hurry and... Whoa. Oh. 
Well. The bucket destroyer. My prized creation. You had so much potential. Oh, there was. We were going to do such marvelous things with you. Tell such spell-binding stories about you. All of it squandered now. Goodbye, new friend. For the moment in time that you were here, you were magnificent. I... <laughs> Come on. <laughs> All right, so... Um, very quickly. Um, in... <laughs> <laughs> Go through all that again. Um, in, in in my in my headset, the the sound was very loud. Also, my controller was shaking so violently, like it was it was so so incredibly tempting to throw that in there just to end it. But my much of the who, who couldn't love the bucket destroyer, honestly. Okay, so I know there's this game is about moral, uh, you know, moral aptitude and 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 and, and ethics. I tried to make the fir my first playthrough of this. I tried to make so many of what I I felt to be well good. <laughs> I'm glad I know that now. I'm also glad that in my heart I made the right decision not to destroy my bucket. <laughs> Which is so weird because it's like, it's again, it's just an inanimate object. It actually put through me me through a lot of pain, uh, in the previous thing. Um, I should want to destroy this thing because that that was horrifying. But yeah, when you're faced with throwing something into something that that viscerally uh, evil, no. Oh, you're oh you're fine. Uh, don't worry about. Don't worry about spoiling things. <laughs> On my last stream, I had quite a bit, quite a bit spoiled. Not not all of it, obviously. Uh, uh, but no, I'm not going to do that just for ethical reasons. That's terrible. It's kind of like, um, okay, well, you know what? I don't want to spoil Last of Us, but it's kind of like a decision that one makes in The Last of Us, where you can go all out or you can have an ethical dilemma. I prefer to have an ethical dilemma. <laughs> How wonderful. Stanley was alone. Finally. This is great, he thought to himself. This is what I've wanted all along. I got what I wanted. Yes, thank you, Loop. Loop, not spoiling things. Awesome. Duck? giving me lots of actually really useful inform information and, and you know uh, also helpful um, <laughs> I mean that's the other thing is I feel like I'm missing so much because it's all so random and it's crazy because like okay so at this point now what have I put into this game in total some, some, something like five and a half hours Oh, Loop, you should absolutely play it, unless you don't like um, enjoying things. <laughs> if that's your thing, you know. I mean, it, Duck, it actually is very helpful, for the record. Uh, this info is super great. It's very cool. And, I, you know, I did my research a bit before playing, um, but I don't have, like, the, the you know the experience in lore to, to talk about it proper. I also like, by the way, that in Stanley Parable 2, it actually, there is a memo. <laughs> um, no, Last of Us, I, I would never, I, for the record, I would never try and convince anybody to play any game uh, or watch any movie or TV show. I have strong feelings about things. I think if you like games and if you're cool with third person things, then Last of Us is one of the greatest games ever made. Uh... Stanley stood for a long time in one spot. <laughs> it's part of a game. He likes to see how long he can go without dying. So far, he's doing excellent. And if he just stays right where he is, I'm sure he'll keep up that good momentum. Let's observe the genius at work. 
Dude, Smash Melee is great. Smash Smash Melee, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um <laughs> Well <laughs> So yeah, for the okay, again, you know, everybody should should love playing what they love. If you don't love playing it, please don't play it. If you don't love playing video games, you know, then don't play video games at all. Like, you know, and Toto, then 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 don't. Um, uh, yeah, I have uh, friends and people that watch straight and that, like get a lot of just watching playthroughs and like that's 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 great. Last of Us uh, is is a genuinely fun experience. <laughs> you know, Duck. I will say so. So while I I I have okay. So while I play Smash. I'm I'm absolutely not great at it. I, I I I'm I'm not terrible. Like I could I could beat my nephew. Um and you know that's saying a that's saying a lot. He's pretty good. Um but you know, yeah, uh I start get competitive about things. There was a, a rhythm game that came out recently, um Theater Rhythm Final Bar Line. Um it's like Final Fantasy music, whatever. And I started to get competitive with that and that was that I uh, that was down a well, yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> I don't want to get that competitive because then I get just sucked on a rabbit hole and then that's like my whole day. That's all I'm doing. And that's, you know, that's that's fine. But sometimes I have to do things. Um, I hope, by the way, uh, since uh, since Lou, since you mentioned that you watched it, um, well, I hope you liked it. I, I I enjoyed the show. I thought it was I thought it was very good. I, I have a, a really great friend who um, I co-stream with sometimes, who will not watch it because he loves and respects the game that much that he's like any version of this that's not a video game. I am not going to. Is not my thing. That's very hard for me to respect, but you know what? That's his thing. So if you if you watched it, you know. And you liked it? Warmth and right on. spread through Stanley's arms. With the bucket in his arms right. again, he was home. So, okay. So we've restarted that bit. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door I know. on his left. I know. The bucket's back. I feel... I have mixed feelings about having the bucket back. <laughs> um. Boy, um, you know what I haven't done this is... This was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to jump him, off telling the him conveyor. that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. Yes. Yeah, that was the... I, you know what? I had to. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Was this better than the meeting room? Yes, Stanley thought to himself. Yes, perhaps it truly was. How insightful the bucket turned out to be. The, yeah, the, um, when I was going through the ending with the phone call with the bucket and the narrator was getting Truly, jealous. Being here with the bucket. Yeah, no, okay. Never yeah, mind. Buck, bucket's wrong. The bucket was wrong. Stanley and I was comparing this whole thing to, to a relationship to the and the, the, the toxic relationships and things like that. It's like, oh, the bucket literally says property of Stanley on it. Um, so it's kind of hard to argue. <laughs> No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go See. somewhere else. The cargo lift, yes. Go there. Go to the cargo lift. No, I'm going to jump on the, um... I'm going to jump on the, uh... On the, uh, on the stairway. Good, said the bucket. Now ride the lift all the way to the top. There's something up there I need you to do. Stanley did not question why or how this bucket was speaking to him. It should have alarmed him, of course, because buckets can't talk. But Stanley chose not to think about this obvious fact. He was firmly convinced that the bucket had spoken to him, and he unthinkingly did whatever the bucket asked. <laughs> this I haven't done with the bucket before, and I'm putting my full faith in it. No, stop. Look there on the wall. You see, there's a sign right there. It says, no buckets past this point. Stanley, how uh, could you think it was okay to bring oh. a bucket here? Unless... 
What if the problem is that you actually don't know what is a bucket and what isn't a bucket? <laughs> I suppose that would explain a lot about your behavior up to this point. Which, if that's true, well, my goodness, I think we have to do something about it. This misunderstanding could have dire consequences on the entire rest of the game if not addressed quickly and properly. So much of the impact of the story is dependent on your understanding of what is and isn't a bucket. Please, step in here for a moment. Uh, you know... There's so you know what one of the one of my favorite things about the narrator character is that he just tells you to do the most ominous, terrible thing. Step into this dark room. <laughs> it's happened so many times. I'm already I'm always okay with it. <laughs> now then, I'm going to run you through some test scenarios. And you'll tell me whether or not the thing oh, I'm showing no. you is a bucket. Oh, Simple no. Simple enough, right? This should tell us everything we'll ever need to know about what is or is not a bucket. Okay, let's begin. I feel like this is probably based on... Item one. Is that the is who wants to be a millionaire? This is absolutely just the uh, who wants to be a millionaire. Incorrect. It is a hologram of a bucket, oh. not an actual. <laughs> Why am I even trying? <laughs> Item two. Is this a bucket? I wonder what happens if you, uh... Ah, gee, gee, Regis, I don't know. I feel like, uh... I feel like it's a bucket, but you know, it could also not be a bucket. Um, you know, I don't want to use my lifelines too early on this one. <laughs> I know I could phone a friend, but uh, you know, I'm just gonna have to go with my uh, I'm gonna have to go with my instincts. Ask the audience, not you know. On the second question, I. I'm not gonna do it. I'm, I'm gonna just. <laughs> but there's still a studio. <laughs> just because it's not filmed in front of a live studio audience doesn't mean that it's not filmed in front of a live studio. No. Correct. Oh, it's hey! A 3D printed recreation of a bucket, not an actual bucket. Oh, that's what you meant. It's oh sorry, Doc. You actually gave me the hint on that one. I didn't even understand it. I'm sorry. Three. Is this a bucket? no? <laughs> there's no way. There's somebody in the audience. Can I actually go? You know what? I don't think I can go look around. So, and with the brightness settings on my screen are fine. I'm gonna go ahead and say this is absolutely 100% a bucket. Correct. This Nailed is a it. Bucket. Obviously. Two out of three. That means I won a million dollars. Item four. Is this a bucket? <laughs> <laughs> There's no way. I mean, maybe. I'll I'll look online for better screenshots and find out. I'm gonna go ahead and say this probably isn't a bucket. Correct. This is a tractor and not a bucket. To be honest, I just sort of put this one in here as a gimme, but I was what? starting to get concerned <laughs> that even this might be too much for you. Thank you for not <laughs> making me look like an idiot. Okay, next one. <laughs> I'm doing so good at this. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Again, I just I, I can't get over that he went back and wrote all of this <laughs> just for a port. And I know it's not just sports, obviously so much more of that now, but man. Uh. 
I mean, I, I, I still don't think it's a bucket. Incorrect. Wait, what? This is a bucket. How? It wasn't, though. You're right. I guess Item I just don't... Six. Is this a bucket? Well, it's not a tractor. Or I don't know. Maybe it is a tractor that's shaped like a bucket. It's This is, this is a lot going on. Trick question. Both. Gotcha. But it's a yes or no. Okay. <laughs> Item. Wait, hold on. I can't find the next one. Let me see. Yeah. It should be around here somewhere. Yes. Thank you. There's uh, nothing here. Of course it isn't a bucket. We both Luke, know thank you well so much. So much for tuning Wait, in. When I say nothing isn't a bucket, that makes it sound Thanks like I'm saying everything is a bucket, which Appreciate of course it. is not true. Unless, is that what you think? Answer me straight, Stanley. Are you trying to tell me that you believe everything is a bucket? I mean, in the grand scheme of things... Philosophically, theologically, yes. You know what? I'm too confused to even sort it out. <laughs> I've lost all sense of perspective. <laughs> what is a bucket? What isn't a bucket? Mere moments ago, I could answer these questions with confidence. And yet now I'm somewhat adrift. Do any of us know what a bucket is? Am I a bucket? Stanley, I can't keep doing this. I'm losing myself, and myself was all I ever had to begin with. <laughs> I'm afraid the bucket is threatening to tear our relationship apart. Gets so jealous of this bucket. I'm sorry, but I'm going to erase all buckets from the game entirely. Okay, here we go. No, don't. No. That's the what only happened? bit of trauma I had. Is left. everything gone? Why did everything disappear? Wait. Was everything a bucket? Every single thing in the game was a bucket. Oh my God, I had no idea. How could... Except me. I'm not a bucket after all. <laughs> you, Stanley, you're still here. You're not a bucket either. Oh, this is wonderful news. We're not buckets. Yeah. Yes, I actually feel much more at ease right now. It's delightful to get some clarity on that issue. But it doesn't change the fact that we haven't got a game. So, mm. tell you what... I'll reset everything, and we'll put back all of the buckets, okay? And we'll know that it's all a bucket. <laughs> but if you run into anyone else, maybe don't mention that. Who knows what that information might do to a person? All right, here we go. Oh. Uh, I mean, I mean, that's what I'm going to be doing tomorrow with everybody I talk to. Did you know that everything's a bucket? Um, Duck, it depends on... If I, I'll say it depends on if I had already seen it, and I mean if it's if it's an ending that can happen right now, then absolutely. Um, uh, okay, yeah, you know, yeah. If it's if it's something we can get to, sure. Uh, just walk me walk me through it. Okay, but if it, I t if it's a thing that uh, you already that we were talking about, what was it just a little bit earlier? already an ending that you asked if I got or if I didn't get and I don't think I answered it it doesn't matter oh the cassette um yeah let's do the cassette absolutely all right so all we're back in the blue room gone. what could it mean Stanley decided to go to the meeting room perhaps he had simply missed a memo I need to take a screenshot of this real quick because I need to remember Okay, yeah, no, you're, you're, we're in this together now. Um, <laughs> this is, I think the title, I think I actually titled the stream Let's Play, which implies that I'm not going to be the only, other than Don't You, okay. Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference, nor did it advance the story in any way. 
Okay, so when Stanley to came right. to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. There, I forgot either what. Wait, was there a? You know what? This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Stanley felt lightheaded, butterflies in his stomach, but eager to get back to business. Stanley oh, that took was the a first nice cut. Open door that was a nice cut in audio. Oh, that that the audio that was that was all right. All right. Stanley was so bad at following directions. It's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Wait. Go to the lift. Don't step on it. Well, then, you know, <laughs> I, I was going to say. But when he's to prove that he is in control of the story and no one gets to tell him what to do, Stanley left from the platform. I was going to say, I think you're right. Uh, Good job, Stanley. It is probably Everyone better with the bucket. Very powerful. And one of the things I was going to say when I went into the, the blue room and I left, I was like, oh, wait, was there a bucket? I should have gone. The well, now the blue room has gone, but it's okay because I can get the bucket. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Stanley picked up the bucket and smiled. He'd never be alone again. Not truly alone. Not with the bucket around. No, you know what? I will say for a second, because I know we're, we're going to get to this. We're going to get to this ending. But I will say, you're right. Not everything is better with the bucket. Um, it is. Di it is different with the bucket the narrator is less antagonizing he is more jealous of the bucket he's more supportive of me as a person because I found someone better but the bucket is also toxic or at least that's what they it's you know <laughs> it's true it's true I the meeting room I think I went through what was it five or six times before I finally ran through all that and then with the bucket there's several several uh, more trees with that too it's very it's the effort that went into this Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door okay so left. I'm going to the this was not the correct room. way to the meeting room but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him the bucket's him guiding the me down a bad path was simply the place to okay be. first of all first of all there's only been one ending without the bucket that was an okay path and it was the quote unquote right path it's the quickest path to where you just follow all of his instructions and it's the end of the game within like you know five minutes it's the only time the narrators guided me down the right path it was when i followed literally every every instruction he gave me anytime i deviated he has purposely led me down a bad path uh, hence my whole toxic relationship, you know, analysis, which is not the whole analysis of this game, obviously, it's not what I'm getting at. I would say the bucket does not lead me down bad paths any worse than the narrator does. <laughs> so again, also the narrator's speaking for the bucket at some points, so... I'm not going to say that the bucket is great or has done everything right for and me. And it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct, was this better than the meeting room? Yes, Stanley thought to himself. Oh, okay. Yes, oh, I'm sorry. sorry. I got... I was... I was... <laughs> You're right. I was getting a little... Stanley a little... The door uh, on his left to go back to the meeting room. A little carried away there. And my apologies because it got... My, my, first, my first playthrough stream, uh, there was a lot of philosophical contentious debate going on <laughs> no <laughs> said the bucket okay Don't so go there's to the meeting room go somewhere else the so cargo is th lift. This yes bit? go there go to the cargo lift oh okay oh hey thank you yeah I know my um uh, the last game I, I did a full playthrough of a uh, Crisis Core, um, which is a playthrough, right? So like it doesn't require a lot of commentary. I did a bit. Uh, I just can't. I can't really help myself. A game like this really demands commentary. So you know, if like 
yeah, if I'm playing uh, an RPG or something I, I really care about for the first time, that's you know like really serious. Like I'm, you know, it's a playthrough. I'm not. I'm gonna try not to talk over it. Um, but I feel like if I'm not talking during this, I'm going to lose my mind. Okay, here we are though. So I might actually be quiet for a second. <laughs> Do I have a Discord server? That's a, that. Thank you. That's a great question. Um, I did for a minute. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Yeah, we can get back to that. Um, because this is one of those times in video game history that I'm actually just gonna absorb what's going on here. This is day number 295, tape number... <laughs> I don't even know. I've lost track. Nothing feels real anymore. The longer I study this bucket, the less sense anything makes. The sheer euphoria I feel every time I pick it up. No matter how many times I've done it, it's always the same feeling. And the emptiness in my chest when I set it down. Oh, it doesn't make sense. There's no explanation for it. I still I haven't figured out why I see the world so differently when this bucket is in my arms. Why everything feels so... What do I do with this treasure? I can... I can monetize it. It's unthinkable the amounts of money people will pay for even just an hour with the bucket. This is my golden ticket. But I have to be careful, because as soon as this gets out, there's going to be a target on my back. Even now, I don't know who might be trying to get... What's that? Who's there? So we got the Lovecraft ending. Um, <laughs> fucking hell. <laughs> oh, I'm going to sleep well tonight. Yeah. Oh, my God. Um, that was pure fun. Also, more evidence to how great, how great he is at just actually writing horror into his commentary. Yes. Oh, so creepy. So creepy. Also, quick, quick fun bit. Uh, mentioning a golden ticket and bucket is in Charlie Bucket in the same bit. Not bad. Appreciated that. That was, that was, that was, that was what I would describe as fun creepy. Like Lovecraft creepy, you know. Not existential creepy like so many other things in this game oh my gosh okay so um i actually uh duck thank you so much so much well, right exactly i mean this is why okay so you're talking about earlier about if this were fun for him to write uh or if this was fun for him to write rather um like it's I, I I mean yes of course ah yeah Jinx yes of course it was but I imagine like man <laughs> it's just all of his thoughts out on the paper and some of it is so personal 
like uh, I imagine it was it was it was fun but it was also cathartic but it was also deeply troubling and sad at times and everything uh, a great a great writer should go through uh, I think this is one of the one of the best um, scripts or tre- uh, script trees or however you really want to put it um, I wouldn't really say narratives but just writing uh, examples of writing in a video game uh, I've, I've I've seen it's 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 in its genre unparalleled. It's 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 if it makes you stop and think this had to be fun to write while you're playing it, that's probably good writing. <laughs> um, so with that being said, uh, boy, uh, thank you so much for for your help with this, uh, for 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 the hints and the direction, uh, and helping with chat and, um. And the cassette tape ending, I think, is probably how I'm going to end my stream tonight. It is, I said earlier, it wasn't that late here. It's it's getting to be to the point where it is, and we're a little over two hours. So thank you again. Um, and uh, I'll be streaming. I'm probably going to start. Uh, <laughs> if I'm doing Stanley Parable again, I'll, I'll preface it in my thing. Um, but I think I'm going to start playing a, a, a new game as well. So thank you so much. Uh, and uh, I hope you have a good night. Um, and again, thank you for the follow. And uh, oh, oh, to answer your Discord question, I didn't even, you know what? Forgot. <laughs> um, so I did for a, a hot minute, and then um, thank you. Uh, yeah, I did. I did have a Discord for a hot minute, and then um, I kind of let that go. Uh, kind of forgot about it. There was a lot going on. Um, so might start it back up. Um, if I do, uh, I will put it in my um, bio uh, on my Twitch and on my YouTube so that uh, that that everybody can join again. I again, I, I I did, and then I sort of forgot about it and I took it down. Um, I started back up. I promise I'll put it in my uh, stuff. Oh, that's 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 awesome. Love to hear that. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Uh, all right, right on. Well, yeah, you have a, a great rest of <laughs> whatever's rest of the night here. Uh, great rest of the week, and uh, yeah, uh, see you guys. Uh, see you guys soon. <laughs>